I always remember, hold my baby. Um, man, it's good to be back. Good to be back, man. I apologize for, you know, trying to get my super soldier on. You know what I mean? Uh, down, re up in the stem cells, my shoulder. Look at that. Look at that. I couldn't even do that before. That left hook is bang, bang, bang. I'm ready. Uh, and with all the shit that's been going on, that might I might need that left hook, Mike. We'll talk about that later, though. Very excited. I'm excited. Uh, so it's good to be back, man. I, um, I've been doing a lot of, you know, down. I was down in Tijuana, man. I had uh, water on. Bar- I mean, I, I actually like had a bad reaction. Couldn't even walk, man. I was I was on a walker. For a minute, so I'm limping around a little bit, but not, you know, not that I can't hook off. I got a, still got a nice little left hook, a little right hook, maybe a little uppercut, you know. So I got to do a motherfucker real quick because, you know, I can't, I can't be, you know, I can't, it can't be a twelve round match if I gotta, if I gotta get at somebody. So yeah, it's like the the new Rocky movie where he's like, yeah. your legs are gone, yeah. it's all power. Yeah. So it is what it is. Um, Looking forward to Mike Tyson and uh, Jake Paul. I'm just looking forward to Mike Tyson being able to make some good money, man, uh, without uh, Don King. We should stream it. Oh, me, I'm, me, you, God, really, I'm, yeah, that, I'm that in. That would be dope. Have I, a couple I, comics and uh, watch it together. I would love to do that. Let's do that. Let's set that up. Um, how you been, Mike? Good? Good, good. I was I was going to say, but uh, I'm out 10 grand. Why? Why are you out ten grand? You weren't here, right? Yeah. So I needed relationship advice. Oh so my! So I went to that ten thousand dollar alpha male boot camp. Have uh, you seen this? No, I have not seen let, this. Let me pull it up for you. This is going around the internet. It's for ten grand. You could go to an alpha male boot camp. Who's running? Is it? Uh, is the guy alpha male running it? I, I don't know if that's. He's got a. Is. He's got a big following, but um. I don't know. Maybe you'll recognize. Black him. dude, bald head, no, white guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, dog, it's. First of all, let me just say this. There's no way you can do a boot camp and then get your shit together in one and done because of the fact that it's this. There's there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of minutia. The number's up, 347-464-2827. My stream up yet, Mike? Not yet? Yeah, yeah your stream's up. Actually, okay. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, all right, cool. So I don't know if you've seen this guy right here. <laughs> Let me pull down so you can. Uh, yeah, it's a three day boot camp. It only cost me ten thousand dollars. Is he a black dude or no? Why? I mean, looks like a white dude. Might be mixed. Uh, uh but... yeah, whatever. Let me, this here, let, let me, this let me, is clown. Can you, you play? What, it? what he's about? Uh, right, let me jump. Look to your left and your right. More than sixty percent will not be here fucking Friday. I guarantee it, and I'll make sure. I'll make sure that you earn the right to be here every fucking second. Three day. Because I see in your fucking eyes that most of you don't fucking belong here. And I'll be dead. I'll take this fucking knife off my fucking waist and carve this fucking tattoo off my fucking hand before that fucking bitches show up here on Friday for the graduation. Yeah, I can see. I can see, see where. Fucking eyes are ready. I can see how so women. Alive. I can see how women would just find him so amazing. Um, you know, as long as her daddy beat her. Uh, for many years, she would be like, "Oh, this guy. He just something about him just reminds me of somebody." Uh, put that number up. Let's get it. I mean, I'm. It's sickening. This is sickening. The trash that I'm hearing on the internet uh, advice, and uh, I, I've said something before. I said this before, man. I, I was uh talking to my man, and my man really, really one of one of my clients. I've been, you know, counseling with him for years, a couple years now, and uh. And we, you know, I was just like, dog. I, I realize that sometimes people don't. You, you, you gotta. There's a lot of things that get you, that sabotage, that cut your legs out uh, underneath you before you even get involved in a situation where you can, you can engage a woman in any social situations. Go, let's go. We got a call. Let's go. We running late. Call. You're on the air. Which name are you from? Yo, am I on? Is that me? That's you. Am I you're on the air. Dante, what up, baby? Oh, what up, John? Down in Maryland. Oh, what up, John? What's going on, baby? It's good to hear you, bro. What's going on? Talk to me. What's good? Nothing, man. I, I wanted to comment on your your dumb jacket, but I guess I'll get to my question. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a capper. You a capper? Is that no, you sound like you that. sound like oh, a capper? No, no, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you you do sound like a cap. I can feel. I, oh, is this, that what I sound like? Maybe okay. it's the mic. This, uh, is this sugar on the mic? Sugar? You got sugar? Oh, okay. <laughs> See, that's how they sass the granddads. They always sass the guys. That, 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 that made it. Talk to me, John. What's that's going like, on? What's on your mind? 
Number eight, I, I had this topic in my head that I wanted to, to, to see what you thought about it. Um, my social media algorithms um, a couple of weeks ago led me to two different points of view regarding relationships, right? Okay. So first point of view was, um, I think D.L. Hughley actually posted it, where it was something to the effect of, um, you know, a, a man should be, you know, obviously the, the rock at home and, you know, your, your woman – you know, don't bring your problems to your lady. Don't bring your stresses, your woes, your worries and concern. That's what you got friends for. Right. But, um, you know, the minute that, that, you know, your woman sees you crying, that level of vulnerability, um, you know, you've lost, quote, unquote, that, that level of, you know, control of manhood in the house. Okay. And, um, you know, she has, she now has the, the, the she has the upper has hand. Control. Okay. All right. And the, the other, other the uh, the other mentality that I've seen, and uh, you know, once you once you look at one thing, you, then you know you're gonna the algorithm's gonna show you the other side. Right. Right. Is that, and it's the you know I can't remember who posted it, but it was a man saying to to the fact that, you know, when you come home, your home should be your peace. This should be your place of vulnerability because as a black man out in the world, you got to be hard and and yeah. and you know not show emotion and be you know stoic and resilient and all those other things that you should be able to come home. And, and, you know, getting, you know, in the comfortable of your house, you know, be with your woman. And if she needs to console you, that's what she's there for. You need to be able to break down in front of her, and she needs to bring you your peace, you know, so that you can get back out in the world hard and, and rock solid and all those things. So which which one do you just subscribe to, or which do you think it should be a mix? Should it be one of the other? Okay, so here's here's the thing. Everybody goes left, right, whatever. And I, and I think that's what's the brilliant thing about myself is that – Everything that I do, this is why you can't have a ten thousand dollar alpha male boot camp, because uh, I, I, we were talking. I don't know if you was on yet, but we were talking about that. There's some some white dude who's doing a ten thousand dollar three day uh, alpha male boot camp where he's yelling at people and pulling a knife out and telling him he's gonna cut his alpha male tattoo off, whatever. My my point uh, my point is this: it, it's all relative to the situation. So. Let's say, um, so you know what you know what they what what when they, what they mean by an ick when women call call things an ick, right? Like a like a red flag kind of situation. Well, not a red flag, but it's an ick. Like, oh, if a guy eats soup in the summer, I can never date him. <laughs> just just dumb, arbitrary shit that women. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I see if I see a man eating a a, a banana. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But but here here's the thing with that all of that mm. stuff is very arbitrary arbitrary it's arbitrary and it's uh uh-huh. it's situational so I do not advocate that you're breaking like you don't want to be uh you when we talk about breaking down right mm-hmm. you don't want to be the <laughs> you don't want to be that you know what I mean right. you know what <laughs> snot bubbles and and that that kind of broke down. Although right. it, it's also situation. If your mama died, right? Yeah, it, yeah. You got that, license for that. That's you got license for that. Um, and the 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 idea of a woman bringing your peace is based on how you have how you act in a way and what you expect of her and and her capacity to bring you peace. But she should be doing that. That's that's her choice of what mm-hmm. she does. If she's not bringing that bringing you that peace. So that you can recharge your your battery, oh, uh, then then you got the wrong woman, or you mm-hmm. haven't you haven't given her the guidance so that she could she can understand that that's what you need. Um, so I I I do say you gotta you got your friends and stuff. If you got a breakdown breakdown, if you falling apart, you 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 don't do that at home. Um, although if you a killer, right, and mm-hmm. you get one thug tear on the side of your cheek because. You, Cause yeah. your man, I was gonna ask you about the thugs here. Right, what? Well, if that you got good man tier. one single good man, that can also be attractive. It it's all about how it's it's. Let's but if you a if you a uh, you a pussy already, and you crying, do you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's yeah. where you're at. If you're a dude where you, she's never seen you cry every any, any day, and you give it a breakdown. You know, you like, man, I, y'all just don't understand. Blah, 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 you, know, just, you do the one thug tear. That mm-hmm. would that can make her even more attractive to you because you feel as though that you're that she's that you trust her enough. You're, you're safe enough. She's safe enough. You're, you're safe enough around Ex- her. To, exactly. But she's got to yeah. already know that you, you know, 
you you that dude anyway. Right. Do you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. But mm-hmm. if you crying and whining and you hiding behind the couch because you don't want to have the argument, I, th- I mean, I haven't been live in a while because I was down in Tijuana, but – Mm-hmm. I, a dude called up last, if I remember correctly, he was like, oh, you know, I just, I, I just didn't want to, you know, I just didn't want to have no trouble. I didn't want to make no trouble. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean make trouble? You mean, you mean talk about what makes you happy? Explain to this woman what makes you happy? Like, you don't want to do that because you, you think that's going to be a problem. Well, you're, you're already, this relationship is done already if you can't, if you feel like you can't even speak up about, what your happiness is, and I, 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 we posted a clip on that on 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 YouTube, and this guy was like, "Listen to this guy, you'll never have a happy marriage. Yeah, happy life, happy wife, which means you are there to just make her happy, to keep her right, to keep which You're is never clocking out. How You're is just that? Working. How is that a yeah. marriage? How how is that? What does that do for you? You can do that on your own, you know. Mm-hmm. So so I I subscribe to both sides of it, and it all depends on how hard a dude you are in the first place. Um, and how how uh, in control of your relationship and how honest you are, how credible you are, how empathetic you are, how how um, uh, unaffected you are about your surroundings already. If if everything that happens, everything is crazy and everything is emotional for you, mm-hmm. and you that you that dude who's checking her phone and. You know, we you going, where you going, and 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 then you breaking down with the snot bubbles in the tear. Oh, it's it's over. You <laughs> you've know, what already, I'm you've already lost. Yeah, so I, I just think that I I just don't I don't ever think there's a one, uh, there's a a, a one fit one you know one shot one fit all for everything. I think you got to look at the situation, and I think that's why you can't have you can't have these 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 seminars and stuff because. They're trying to teach you how to be a man in three days when, you know, like even the, the man. I, and, and, and John's. So let me just say this. John's an alpha. Good friend of mine. Good friend of my, him and um, my boy Lamont. And John is a is a really good dude. But the man that you are has taken many years to become that. And you're still yeah. in an evolution to do that. So to have one situation, I, I mean, I definitely think that there's some uh, absolute truths that you can speak. I just don't think that that's one of them, you know? I, I, I think the one thing that um, at least you can learn, and by you I mean Dante, yeah. that you can learn from this this, this brother that's yeah. holding these uh, $10,000. Is that uh, I need to up my price. <laughs> I'm about to say that you need to charge eight and uh, <laughs> get this weekend money. Yeah, because, yeah, but you, know, you know, and that's if, if, but the if thing they buying, you might as well be selling. But the the thing is that you can't do it in a weekend. And I and to be honest, if I'm if if the principles of the show is ace is authenticity, credibility, and empathy, and I don't think I can get you there in three days, then it's it's I think it's unfair for me to sell something to somebody who it ain't gonna really help them. I would rather yeah, have. We'll, we'll, we'll talk offline about a sales strategy. Right, I, I, I feel like eight thousand dollars is a good upfront, and then you know, right. a, a follow up plan of you know maybe a couple of months, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. Make sure you're ready, steady. You just still going on with the plan. So you know, just, it's like a, a dollar meal or Weight Watchers or something. Well, like well, gotta, I mean, anybody knows that you go to dontinero.com. You can get a consultation from me I, uh, or on there. Of course, uh, I do per hour, and I do a, uh, I do a, a, gr- a three hour discount package for for money y'all can check the prices on that uh dante com. click on consult you can get me there but john thanks a lot man for calling out it's good, always good to hear you bro you know it's good to good to hear you we can't wait to get downtown down there and be more and come see you man and hang out a little bit no all doubt, right bro all right bro good to see you. i holla yeah, I, I just don't think that there's ever a one shot. It's it's I mean, I've had guys approach me and be like, yo, you need to do these weekend seminars and stuff. And I and I, I could teach, uh, do a weekend seminar that I think would that would, would give people the information. But what I find is that any guys that I've had success with and 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 I, and if anybody listens to the live, they can my guys who who, you know, who consult with me call on the, on the live all the time and they'll tell you man it, their life has been changed and stuff but it, it's never been changed to the degree like there's there's nuance to it there's stages there's 
you know, for me to say, okay, these, this is the checklist that who you got to be as a man. First, sometimes you have to access, you have to access who you are. I got to figure out who you are as a person to know where I can build you up. Um, speaking of that, I mean, we got a call. No. Yeah. 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 I'm cool, here. I'm here. here. Oh, what's going on, baby? Who am I speaking to? Yo, 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 what's poppin', Dante? Uh, this is Kevin from, uh, well, uh, let's just say south of Chicago, man. What's going on, Kev? What's going on? How can I help you, bro? All right, brother. So, look, um, before before uh, a- any interjections come in, I did call in about uh, about a month ago. Okay. And we went on this whole, like, it was about 30 minutes of uh, laying the five bricks down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I've been following you for years, brother. So, I mean, I've been applying everything that you've been doing. Okay. From Black Phillip, Beige Phillip, to Man School. So, I mean, I've been applying a lot of things. A lot of it's helped me get out of my shell, okay? Uh, uh, no, laying the no. five bricks down, of course, has been very fundamental. Um However, I, I, I do want to say this, uh, that I, I know I'm a very, very special case. I don't really know too many people like me. I was a dude that was always sheltered. Then I broke out of my shell. I was almost in a one percenter bike club. I talked to you last month about how I've been doing martial arts and things like yeah, yeah. that. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah, so my thing is like, yo, I've had uh, I've had some very like I had some very successful women. And it's, it's just never been like, um. It's never been uh, what I wanted it to be, cause yo, first off, I, I do not like I do not like um uh uh, uh what, what's the word I'm looking for? I do not like the process of getting a woman to the point of where where you know any type of relationship established i i don't like that process i prefer it if i was just very intimate with one woman i married her i'm cool just like that bro i literally do not i don't care how pretty you are shorty look there's so many fine females out here what makes you really that special that i gotta put up with your garbage right and and then and, and in the process of speaking this i've i noticed that a lot of it is putting up with a bunch of garbage okay well let me let, wait got, let me get hold on for a second let me let me say this yeah, yeah, this, is, this is something that i talk about all the time it's like you know um a guy I, I've, I've i've witnessed this many times in my you know a guy will get a puppy right and and they know that what it takes to get a puppy i mean when you you get a puppy you got at least 10 years 10 to 12 years of commitment if you buy a puppy right you gotta train them you gotta potty train them you got you gotta house train them you gotta walk them two, three times a day, you got to feed them, you got to take them to vet, you got to get the shots, you got to, so it's, it's sure, interesting. The, the upkeep, I get you. Is there's an interesting thing that men will sign up for that over and over again, and then they'll be in a relationship and they're not willing to make the same kind of commitment and sacrifices to make a relationship good. Now, I'm not comparing women to dogs. What I'm comparing is the relationship. You know, that sure. here's a relationship that it should that should be, you know, like what you're saying is the companionship of somebody who you want, you know, for the rest of your life. But you're not willing to work at the the to the, the fine tuning of that. I, it just to me, that just doesn't make any sense. I understand that sure. it's aggravating. I understand that sometimes it's putting up with things. I understand that it's sometimes it's teaching and guiding. But I mean, why are we willing to make that? Why are we make willing to make that commitment when it comes to 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 we get a puppy and then we get a whole ass woman, and we're not in a relationship and maybe even children and a family, and we're not willing to fine tune those things so that they room. It's just it's just it's hypocritical. You feel me? Man, I'm in that same bin with you, man, because I got a lot of homies that are in the same thing. Like, why is my girl like this? Why is my girl like that? Well, homie, you go out there and cheat on her, bro. You over there watching videos and stuff of other women, like, in front of her, and you can tell that she doesn't like that. She wants to kick it with you, but you're out here getting drunk, and you're over here. You I know, mean, you know, I, you can, and, stuff, like, and here's the thing. You you find a woman who don't mind any of that. You can also find a woman who will, sure. who will, who will look at chicks with you. They'll, you'll find, I mean, you, uh, there's, like I, like I said, there's not a one, one fit, one shot, one fit all because it's just not and, that and way. And I get that. I get that. Now, that's not particularly my thing. Uh, I, I'll just throw it off the bat, but, um. You know that that that's what I'm just saying with uh, with other friends that I've been around. You know, right? But I'm saying you, but you did, but you did say you don't want to deal with the 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 the, the nuance, the, the the honing it down yourself. And so what I'm saying is just that's that's just contradictory to the to to the system that I put out there. I mean, if you well, 
Well, what I'm saying is that I don't want to have to keep going through it over and over and well, over. Well, that nobody's always nobody's saying you should do that. I, I, nobody's saying you should that. In fact, I'm saying you shouldn't do that. I'm saying if you, if right. you are in a situation where you have spoke about something and these things continue continue to do to continue to happen over, then you then you have to vacate that relationship. You, you a right. lot of times guys want to hear it verbally. Well, I, I'm gonna be a bitch to you whenever I can. This is how I was raised. But it, it, but if you spoke about it once. The second time it happens, then it's time to pack up and go and just say, listen, it's, hey, it's, and, and, and this way you don't have to be mad because you've invested so much into this because she's showing you who she is and you believe her and then you just go, but it, see, but that always, see, you, what's the incentive for her to change if you're not dope in the first place? Like, there has to be something invested, uh, she has to have a vested interest in making changes and adjusting and making compromises, and the way she's going to do that is if she's think if she thinks you're dope. So, you know, I'm just saying that whatever that situation, whatever it is, all of it is part of it. The, the the once you get it running, you know, get things running smooth, and I mean, you still gonna have your bumps and bruises, but I mean, when you have a real understanding, and that's why the credibility and the truth is really important. You got to be honest about who you are. You got to be you got to be credible about what you're going to tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate. You got to understand what your non-negotiables are, and then never negotiate that. The minute you ne negotiate your non-negotiables, then what you're saying is whatever that negative behavior is, uh, is acceptable. So y if you if you understand what I'm saying, so this the consistency, but you can't have. You know, anything, my grandmother used to say this to me all the time, anything worth something is worth a just sacrifice. And that means a great relationship, man. I appreciate you calling, dog. Um, yo, now, thank hold up, hold up, hold up. I mean, I still didn't really get to my question. Okay, what's your question? If, okay, so look, my thing is, is that I'm always running into the courting phase, and I can never get beyond that. That's where I'm saying, yo, look, I, I don't want to have, I don't like to keep going. Over and over again, I'd like to court with just one woman. Give my all to that one woman. What do you, wait, so what are you saying? You're going through the counting phase, and you can't get past that. You got a sticking Correct. point. You, I can't. I mean, we we would have to talk about that. We'd have to talk about what what specifically. You got to book a, a book a session, and then we could talk about what 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 you're doing and what you're not doing, and then I can adjust that based on that. And sometimes. Uh, sometimes what'll be holding you back, sometimes that'll be, you know, your mindset will be holding. Uh, everything that you do, you're communicating. You're communicating a subtext. So if you're getting stuck at a point which, where you can't move past the courting phase, then it's something that you're doing that you're not communicating. If, if, if you're saying that you keep getting stuck on the same thing over and over again, the same place over and over again, then you just you don't have the skill to move past that. Uh, you got to book a session, and then we can we can delve into what what issues is. That's DanteNero.com. Click on consult. All right, fam. Now, no, I mean I've been booking sessions with Harry up and down. Well, you probably should have booked them with me. <laughs> uh, no, man, it wasn't that. I just felt like I identified more with Harry just because he seemed like the type that came from where I was coming from. Yeah, we all I, I we all came before. we all came from the same place. I mean, I I taught him. So I don't, you know. If, and I if, figured that that was going to be my next step. Is that yo, Eric can't help me. Then it's, it's Dante, but if you're maybe. not, if you're okay. not getting what you want, and then then maybe he's not identifying the nuance that needs to, that that you need to change. And that's that's something well, he, that he told. Me, I'm sorry. No, I say I was saying that, that he was telling me it's just like, bro, I don't I don't know what's going on. There's something definitely going on. I'm going to have to get Dante involved. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, well, hit me up. You know how to get me. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, blessings. Thank you so much for taking the call, brother. God bless, man. All right, bro. Appreciate appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Um. I had a I had a, a, a I had a brother who was really had you know grew up grew up with a abusive mom grew up with a uh 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 let me give you the number real quick three four seven four six four two eight two seven grew up with an abusive mom grew up with a a dad who was kind of vacant and not really supportive and. In their, in his in their marriage, they just kind of he kind of gave up and went in his room and stayed in his room on his computer and to stay away from having arguments. And his and I just was consulting with a guy today. And the, when you realize it is that um, if you don't want um, if you don't want to succeed, you're not going to succeed. Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. 
Um, yeah, we got a call. Uh, let me just finish this real quick. The, if if you don't believe, if you don't like you enough to allow yourself to success, you will sabotage and cut your legs out from under you over and over and over. Let's go to this call. Call, Hello. you're on the air. Hi, Dante. Thank you for taking the call. I actually uh, reached out to you um, through the live consultation okay. um, a, a few weeks ago. Um, I know you get a lot, so you probably don't remember me. But it. What's your name? So you, what's your name? Where are you from? My, oh, my name's Bernard, and I'm from Chicago. Okay. I, uh, when I when I called you, I was um, telling you about just the hiccups I'm having when it comes to just women in general. Right. And today, and I know I have to book a consultation with you for that, but today I'm just having an issue, a very specific issue, and it's with my girlfriend. Hit me. And it's something realistically that I've been dealing with. We've been together since 2017, uh-huh. like ending of 2017, but beginning of 2018 up until now. And this is something, honestly, Dante, that I saw at the very beginning, and it is a red flag. And you know, Come on, tell me, tell I me. Let's go. We got people on the line. Let's go. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, when I don't know how to, how to deal with the situation where she can never be wrong about a situation. And whenever I point out a particular situation, um, she reacts in a very, in my opinion, volatile way. Okay. And let me, ask, how long is, how right? long has this been going on? Honestly, it's been going on since 2018. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, have you had a conversation about what her response is to you when you when you I'm mean, not when you're arguing, not when there's an issue, when when you're not, you know, like, hey, babe, can I can I, can we chat for a little while? Um, because I, I feel like um, there's some things that I'm bothered about in this relationship. Have you had that conversation with her outside of the argument? I have actually today is uh, the day that I had that. Uh, is this uh, the first time that that you had that conversation? This is not the first time where I've set her down and I've said, "Hey, this is an issue that that has bothered." Okay, me and so what was her response when you said it? Um, in this particular instance, um, the situation was uh, she's a small Asian Chinese girl and. There was these black girls that had stopped, that had stopped her, and I guess said something to her because they had ran a stop sign. And the way that she handled it is she gave them the middle finger. And I told her, "Hey, over here in the states, if you do that to the wrong person, you might get hurt." Right. Her response was, "Hey, I'm not wrong. Nothing that I did was wrong." And I said, "Hey, it's not about wrong or right. What I'm saying is you're coming from a country." Where you've never ever you've never been. I, I get that. Before. What was her response? You, what was her response after you explained she just blew, it? She just she um she just pretty much blew up and then just and said, she, oh okay, she I guess she, that you want me to say she blew up on you. Yes, yeah, she blew up on me. Okay, and so did you so talk to her about blowing up on you before? I I have. And okay, I, and I what 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 did you actually say? I've told her, hey, this is something I, I don't know if it's something you learned from your parents or what's going on, but whenever I come to you. Did, okay, right. You well, you've had that conversation, but I'm saying when she blew up the second, did you tell her that this is that, that this is unacceptable, that this behavior is unacceptable, and if you continue to, to blow up like this, then we're just not going to be together? I haven't said it in that way, but the issue, too, is we live together. That's one issue. Well, it doesn't really Wait, matter because this is not going to change. If if there's nothing at stake for her to change, right? And if you're going to put up with this because y'all signed a lease together and y'all live together, then she's going to keep doing it because why would she change it? You like you you have to understand something that if you if you say that I don't, this is something I don't like this, and this is a this is a non-negotiable, and then you put up with it. Right. What you're in essence saying is this behavior is acceptable. It doesn't matter the conversation you had before. It doesn't matter how many times you've had that conversation. If you're one, if you're t- going to tell me that you live together, you this, you that, then y'all break up and you, you break up. You'll stay in the same house. Y'all sleep in the bed together and then you get your ducks in a row and you get out. This is this woman is not going to change if, if she's if she has you can't make somebody do what you want them to do. You can say, if you continue to act this way, I'm not going to be here. 
And if you're not willing to do that, she will not change. You've had the conversation with her several times already. And and her responses, and then you're now you guys are having arguments about stuff that's not even your problem. You're just you're 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 looking out for her. Um, you're looking out for her because you don't want three black girls to beat to snatch her ass out the car window and whip her ass. And so if you can't keep her safe, right? And she's not going to let you keep her safe, and she's going to tell you basically, I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Just, just the relationship. It's as simple as that. Not being a relationship or the woman you need, you need to be with, unless you're willing to put up with that and wait for the time until she does get snatched up and get the shit beat out of her, or something happens because eventually something's gonna happen. My fear is that that will happen. Um, yes. Well, I mean, if you're not with her, then it's Especially not a problem. in a place like Los Angeles, yeah, because yeah. I can't be with her all the time. Right, but that's the point is still also the point is not really that you it, it's you're worried about her. She, she does this with you, and then when you're trying to teach her, if she's not willing to take any guidance from you and not learn anything from you, then that's the relationship you're signing up for. Somebody who's just recklessly going to do it. Because what she's saying is, if you've already said that this is unacceptable behavior and she does it anyway, well, she's basic. Let me explain. I'm, I'm, in case you you're one one of those guys who need the verbal understanding of what that what that body language is and what that social language is, I don't give a fuck about what you think or what you're telling me. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. Now, if she verbally said that to you, what would you do? Oh, I, I yeah, that would be unacceptable. Would well, what say, I'm hey, what I'm I saying to you is that. that is what she's saying. The second time she does it, she's going, I don't respect your opinion. I'm going to do what I want to do and fuck what the fuck you think. I'm going to do it anyway. Do you not see that that's what she's communicating to you? Just just because she's had, just because she's not direct. Right, but it doesn't matter whether it's blunt. Doesn't it doesn't matter what is whether it's blunt or not. What I'm saying to you is her behavior is communicating that non-verbally. Now, if she said it verbally, you would be like, "Oh, I have to deal with this." What I'm telling you is she's saying it to you. Just not verbally. Yes, sir. So then the question is, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, that's put me in a really tight spot cuz yeah, I, yeah, you're right. You have to have the seriousness of intention in in your in not just in your relationship in your life. When you that's what the credit the C the, is the C and A is the credibility. When you say something, you mean it. You don't have to have somebody beat you over the head. They don't have to write a letter. They don't have to they don't have to put it on a billboard. Their actions are said if you got a chick and she's not and and she's not hitting you with a blowy, it's cuz she don't want to blow you. Cuz guess what? If she want a new Louis Vuitton bag, she's going to go buy a Louis, a Louis bag, right? If she want a new pair of shoes, she's going to go buy a new pair of shoes, right? So yeah. women, men, we all, just human beings in general, we do what we want to do. So when, we have been, when we've been spoken to and we've, and we've, and we've chosen to ignore what, what we're basically saying is, I don't respect the person that have given me the, these guidelines and I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. And I don't care whether she's a little Asian girl. I don't care where she's not, where she is, or where she. She can get snatched in Asia too. The, uh, you know, the, the reality is that th- you're talking to somebody who's toxic, who is acu- uh, who is accustomed to, to um, who's accustomed to acting and responding that way, and you're ignoring it because she's not writing it in a letter or telling it to your face. But she's telling you, "Fuck you." I, I don't care what you think, and I don't respect yeah, you like enough. That. I don't respect you enough. To listen to what your guidance is. So then the question is, and I get it, you may not be able to be ready to leave this or you better, but the longer you, every time you accept this bullshit, you are digging a deep, you are, you are confirming the fact that this bullshit is okay. And your verbal, your verbal objections mean absolutely nothing if there's no action behind it. There has to be action behind your words. And when you're so credible and so consistent and so authentic, right, you don't have to prove yourself because people don't, like, I've had motherfuckers come at me crazy. We were online. Me and Godfrey was online and motherfuckers was coming at me crazy. And dudes hollered at him, hollered at the dude and was like, yo, you might not want to 
bark up that tree. Oh, wow, wow, who the fuck is he? Well, let me just, it, it, uh, look, you could do what you want to do, but that might be a problem. And you get a call and people apologize. Because the next step has to be action. You don't get it. You don't give an apology. An apology is worthless without action. And if you're in a relationship and you're giving guidance and there's no, there's no adjustment, then she's going fuck you. And I don't care how much she loves you or not. She's saying, but she's saying I can love you, be with you, treat you like trash, and you'll take it. And to be honest, how's she wrong? I mean that's the hard truth, and don't get me wrong. It's, it's not that I'm I'm insensitive to the fact that you might love her, and you. The question is, are you willing to be with a girl who's going to treat you like this for the rest of your life? Because it ain't going to change. Scary question that you just. Uh, it's not through. because you can. Yeah. I mean, you're calling yeah. me because you can. You just haven't, your cup hasn't been, your coffee cup hasn't been filled up enough that you're ready to walk, but you will be. Or, and if you're not willing to do it, what will happen is she will beat you down and beat you down and beat your self-esteem down and you'll be dealing with it, that you'll, that you'll be a shell of your man, a shell of yourself in your, in your room or in your den hiding. I, I tell her that a possible solution, and I'm not unfortunate with financially there yet, but I even told her, I said, hey, Maybe we just aren't meant to live together. Maybe this is something where you can't, I can only. So there's something deal that I say. We can deal with each other. Uh, right? No, because what you're saying, it doesn't matter whether you're living together or not. You're still going to need this. You're going to, I mean, if you're ultimately looking for a mate that you can spend your life with, she's not the one. She's either going to change or she's not the one. There's no way you could put up with this for the rest of your life. I mean, don't get me wrong, some people do, but those are the calls that I get. Where I tell them, no. I don't want to be like my parents, and that's exactly, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. And, and your and tolerance, I've even mentioned that. Your tolerance yeah. for this is because of your parents. See, as a hmm. child, we look at our at our dads, if we have a dad or whatever male figure, as the representation of manhood, and we look at our moms as a representation, rep, uh, the the representation of womanhood. And so, if we are accustomed to seeing this, we have a tendency to be tolerant of this. But if you don't want to live like that, then you have to stop it immediately. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're right. And if you're not going to say it, keep your word, then why would I believe what you're saying? You're just talking shit. Just shut up. He's bitching again. He's on that bullshit. I mean, I mean she's probably not talk like that. But, but if no, she, she don't talk no, anything like that. But, it does, but she is. The way my mother talks, that's why it kind of it messes with me because it's more so the silence. The not saying yeah, anything. Yeah, don't. All the of that means the same. That's all that gets to me. If you, if I owe you money and you see me and I don't, I, you be like, "Yo, where's my money?" And I'm silent. What's that mean? Just because <laughs> I'm not fuck you, I ain't paying you money. Pfft, I, I, I could just act like I, like you're not there. I'm saying fuck you. I'm not giving you the money. You're right. So that's something you you got to deal with. Hit me hit me up when you get a chance. When you, you get some funds together, hit me up and we'll we'll talk about it. But it sounds to me like I, I like and I'm not. I would never tell somebody to leave as a technique, because you don't want to leave. And then she said, "Well, go ahead." And then you lose the girl, and then you you're broken hearted because. Or then there's nothing worse than making that decision and then having to go back because you weren't ready to leave. Wait, baby, please, please. I, I, I was just kidding. Let's, you, you could, because in, that, in essence, what you're saying is, baby, please, I'll come back, and you could treat me any way you want to treat me. Just don't leave me. Do you yeah, understand how, do you understand how pathetic yeah. that sounds? When it comes out of my mouth, it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. That happened to me before, back in, back in a, a it's hap- past relationship. It's happened to all, it, ha- it happened to me in fourth grade. <laughs> It happened to me in 2016. <laughs> right. I was on my knees begging this girl. So yeah, yeah it's I crazy. Understand. And 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 where and how do you after you begging you're on your knees and you stand up? How do you ever stand up as a man and this woman look at you with any respect at all? I felt disgusting. Yeah. So and then she stopped talking to me shortly afterwards. Yeah. No, whatever it is, because why? You, because you're saying I'm not worthy of it. Okay. Hit me up, yeah. bro. Hit me up, Ben. All right. 
All right. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good night. All right, bro. DanteNiver.com. Click on consult. If y'all want to talk to me directly on a private one-on-one, and we can we can really hammer this stuff out. But that's those things are like a deep-seated thing um, that happens. Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Uh, you know, we, we see these patterns in our lives. We grow up seeing these patterns and we think that no matter how crazy and toxic it is, it's, it's, it's toxic to the point, but that, that level of toxicity is, is normalcy to us. So we're comfortable with it. You know, if you watched your mom cuss your pops out, you, you in a relationship and your girls cussing you out or throwing shit at you and you, you, well, this is, I mean, this is what I grow up watching. It's an interesting thing where you you have to have, and this is what I mean, your actions have to have intent, 347-464-2827. Call in, any problems, I got you. Um, you got to have, you got to be intentful about what your actions are. You have to, you know, I always say that the analogy I use is uh, in life is like an Uber ride. There's two things that you need to know. You need to understand what your what your current location is and what your destination is. If you don't have those th two things, the Uber can never find you, and they can never pick you up and take you to the destination where you want to be. So you're just that arrow floating around on the map uh, w with no direction. So you, you have to know who you are, what is what, where you're at, what you're willing to put up with, what you're not willing to put up with, and you have to know where you want to go once you understand that, those two things that you have to understand. Um, there's just no doubt about it. I mean, you cannot, and a woman will not respect somebody who's not clear and like, like, like you, you, um, I don't know if anybody's gotten into a car or Uber car or Uber ride and the guy doesn't really know how to drive and he, he don't know how to pull out into the traffic, the speed and traffic and stuff. You are uncomfortable with that. You like, wait a minute, this guy don't just, don't. and then he pulls up and he, he, you know, you could see the cars getting ready to slam into the back of the car behind you. It makes you uncomfortable because this guy is a or guy or girl or whatever. They're showing that they aren't, they don't have direction, that they're not confident in driving. That's what you're doing. You're saying you're not confident in driving. Let's go to the calls. What we got? Call around. Oh, never mind. They hung up. Uh, Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Uh, call back, man. I don't know if you fell off or whatever. You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta understand what the, you, your life needs to be intentful, and 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 uh, you know I, I think that I'm a little more um, understanding about that because I'm older and I've I have seen more sunsets than I'm gonna see. So there's a lot of shit I'm not worried. I'm not willing to put up. Let's go to the phones. Where, who we got? Call you on the air. All right, well, they hung up again. Uh, they probably having a problem, too. That's somebody who has it. It was the same person? Yeah. Yeah, so they're probably having a phone. Call back, bro. Call back. Um, you know, you, you, you get, your life needs to be intentful. Uh, and what I mean by intentful is, like, you, you got to have direction. If you're not showing that you have direction, people will not follow you. If you're very clear and concise, somebody who you it, see, it, it, it's helpful in both ways. Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. If it's helpful in both ways, one in one way because of the fact that you're saying, um, this is the ride that I'm. Uh, th this is the journey. If you're not going, if you're not ready for this journey, then I'm. I'm. Y then you can get on somebody else's ride. Um, it's like yeah, you, know, you ever go to the. Mike, you ever go to the to, to Great Adventure and they have the wa the wa the water rides and then they got the dry rides, right? If you're not ready to get wet, you don't you don't get on the log flume. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just it's just so simple, and I think we overcomplicate it because we're insecure and we don't think that we're worthy. Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Call in. I got you. Um, and and the representation. The, the, what we really understand. What we have to understand is a lot of times we don't explore. Uh, the, like who we are and how we were raised and how those how our parents who p had no idea a lot of times you know especially if you got you know first first uh, generation um, immigrants or you have toxic families or you you know people who are on survival mode instead of instead of on that um, that that on the mode of, of self enhancement and the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment and stuff, you get a lot of a lot of immigrant families in general who come, you know, they come to first generation, second generation, they come in and, and it's all about survive, survive, survive. So they like, like love is not a thing. 
And nor should it should it be if you don't have food in your stomach, you don't have food in your belly and a roof over your head. And a job to continue that. You gotta that's what their focus is. Three four seven four six four two eight two seven. Uh call me, hit me back. I'm ready, I'm ready to hear whatever you got to say. Um but I, I something else that I was I was I was talking about, uh I was consulting with a guy and I, and I, and he's made great progress. Um He's able to get the girl, he's get her out on a date. He's able to put a great date. These girl, the girl. I mean, I, and you know, I've talked about this a hundred times. How so many young dudes. All right, we got a call. Let's go. Call, you're on the air. Fell it's off. A different person this time, but also. Yeah. Is there something going on with the system? You think? No, no, no. They're on, and then they hang up as soon as they get on. <laughs> oh, all right, whatever. Um, but there's a there's a situation where. You you know I, I uh, this guy well, I just it's funny because he's like I I love the dude to death, and I want to see the su- his success. But then he's gotten situations where girls was like getting ready to hook up with him. They wanted they wanted to give him the draws, and then he was like, yeah, I'm not interested, and then cut him off. As they get ready to give him the draws, it's, it's crazy. Then another chick likes him. Any chick that likes him, then he don't like them. So it's like that 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 old saying where it says I would. Uh, I don't want to be a part of any group that would have me as a member. And and where that comes from is the self-hatred. And a lot of times you can be, you can have parents that raise you in a way that where they're not supportive and, and nothing you ever did was good enough and they didn't hug you enough and they didn't encourage you and stuff. And so you think that you're worthless. And, and times when you've made an effort, you didn't get the response that you wanted, and so you don't think that you're worthy. But you got to understand, a lot of times our parents are not nearly as sophisticated as we are today because of the fact that we got food in our belly and a roof over our head, and 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 we're talking about self fulfillment and happiness and the pursuit of happiness and pursuit of our dreams. It, it just a lot of our parents didn't grow up that way. I say this all the time. My my dad was born in 1920. His he had. Uh, it was the youngest boy of 16. Um, he, his oldest sister was born in, in uh, 1896. I, my, you know, naturally, my dad had me much later than, uh, than most people. I think he, I, I might have beat him because I think he had me when, I was, when he was 49. But we got a call? No? But um, 347-464-2827. But my dad, my dad grew up in Jim Crow during separate water fountains. And all. So... To a certain extent, how do I expect him to have the mentality of somebody in 2024, somebody that grew up in the 2000s and who, you know, I mean, there was a time where, where you know, where people didn't talk about therapy at all. If you wasn't rich, and I don't care, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, we didn't, have, we didn't talk about therapy. We didn't talk about trauma, PTSD, none of that stuff. You just, you, it was just like, get up and go to work, stupid. I don't know. Depression was not even a thing that we we considered, um, and so you know you got to understand that a lot of times the capacity in which people are willing or are able to emotionally connect or even to deal with you on that level, a lot of times I mean we, we I mean we, I'm all about respecting your mom and dad, but you know there's a whole, there's an old you know the saying of the um, blood is thicker than water is not the true. Uh, that's not the true uh, saying. The true saying is the blood of the covenant is better than the water of the womb. What that means is the the relationships that we choose to cultivate, the relationships that we work at, the relationships that we push, that we, we cultivate as if they're important, are more important than the ones that come with the water of the womb, the genetic connections, our sisters, our brothers, our family. Our f- now, don't get me wrong, I, I think there's a certain connection we have to family members. But if you have family members that are disrespectful, that you're you're a grown ass man or you're a grown ass woman and and your sisters are not respecting you, right? And they're not giving you genuine re- respect, um, you 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 cannot keep them in your you can't keep that toxicness in your life simply because they have a title. You you have to eliminate these these kind of poisons and these toxins in your life because they will always screw your life up. They they and they'll do it in a in a reckless way, unapologetically. 
And then what do you do? What do you do? Do you just keep putting up with this? You keep getting apologies? I had a girlfriend that I was seeing, and she had a she was the prettiest of the three sisters. Um, her older sister was jealous of her and treated her like trash. Like, um, actually used to use her as bait to get other guys. Used her as bait to get businesses, to make connections and stuff, and then would treat her like trash and talk about her behind her back and turn her friends against her and all kinds of... And I was like, listen, you got to understand... I, I, I said, you got to understand that this is what the nature of your relationship has been since you've been children. She was the baby of the family, and her sisters were just... Her, her older sister was just so nasty and so mean. She also wasn't nearly as pretty as the younger one, and so she was jealous of her, and, and this kind of toxic relationship. And I and as a guy who was dating her, I was like, you got to you gotta understand something that she's jealous of you and she doesn't want you to win. I mean, I, I understand that these are, these are harsh statements to deal with. But if you've got family members that are not willing, that, that don't want, genuinely don't want you to win, you have to eliminate them from your lives because they will sabotage you every chance they get. And, that's, and a lot of times they're not even doing it consciously. It's just this, it's, a, it's an emotional feeling. 347-464-2827, get on the phones. Um, I'm here to talk to anybody and everybody. And what's interesting is this young lady, I was I was guiding her, and I was like, you know, and every time she would go to a family reunion or go to a family dinner, um, she would come back home and be like, yo, you know, she said this to me, and she made fun of my clothes. She, she, she spilled a drink on me. It was just always some dumb shit. And I was like, you have to understand something, that every time you go there, every time you go out with her, I, I understand that you want to be a close-knit family, but she is she is enraged by the fact that you're you're more attractive than her, that you're more likable than her, that you're smarter than her, that you're more successful. And I I even got to the point where when when she had family events, I had to not go because I wasn't going to put. I said, listen, if your sister disrespects you, I'm checking her in front of the family, and that's your job as a man to be like, hey, listen, don't talk to her like that. That's, that's not. I don't care if you, if, well, it's my sister. I don't care if it's your sister. She's, this is my lady. I'm, I'm not going to let you be disrespectful. And it, a lot of times it would, it, you know, because what happens is families are so accustomed to dealing with this bullshit, right, that nobody will say anything. Let's get a call. We got a call. Let's go. Call you on the air. Hey. What's hey. up? What's up, bro? Oh. Who, who am I speaking with? Where are you calling from? <laughs> I'm calling from Texas, but I don't want to be on live, man. I want to get with you on a, uh, another. Well, you gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta sign up for that. But I mean, nobody knows who you are, family. Just say what you gotta say. I, I, I know, but you just kind of struck a nerve. You were saying some stuff about the family, and that that's like right, like God put that right up my alley. Right, right. So I, I'll, I'll do the live thing another time, but I, I, I need. I would like to, yeah, sign up. What do I? How do I go, do that go, stuff? Well, thanks for calling. So give me a chance to to plug the consultations. My my, live con. You can you sign up for them on DanteNero dot com, and you you, uh, you put your credit card in, and you can. Pay. I get an email that says, "Bang, yo, so and so is going whatever," and I call you up, and we 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 kick it around, and I you know, and anybody that's uh has spoken to me before knows that I you know I I do my best to help you, bro. I mean I. My, yeah, I've been following y'all, you and Godfrey a lot, and I know that you're real. Y'all are probably real. Yeah. The real deal. Yeah. Stuff, so I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm all right, brother. That. I appreciate you, man. I, but I'm I'm gonna I, talk I, about I, this family shit a little. Maybe something that'll hit something will hit home. Um, yeah. you have to, you have to. Thanks for calling, bro. You have to understand that your happiness. You you have to put your happiness first because if you don't, she won't. What that means is. That if you're not if you're not if you're not willing to say that you are um, that you that the value of you who you are as a human being deserves a certain standard, then nobody's gonna give you that. We we communicate every time we talk to somebody or we talk we there's any social interaction we are constantly communicating who we are as a person. We're telling people how we perceive ourselves, 
how we value ourselves, how we, how, what we think we deserve. And so a lot of times it's like I, I did a consultation about, uh, I think it was yesterday, and this guy was saying to me, you know, like, yo, I keep it real cool and close to the chest when, you know, when the chick is, you know, when she's a six or a seven, but when she's hot, I lose my mind. Well, if you don't think that she is able to read that, you're out of your mind. If if because if you're willing to put up with anything, right? If you're willing to put up with anything, you'll lay down for anything. Meaning you will she can tell that you're gonna whatever she does is gonna be okay. Whereas, you know, we talk about I've talked about this coming to dates, coming to dates when, you know, like you, you set up a date and a woman is an hour late and I mean I, I might give you fifteen minutes, uh fifteen minutes grace time and then I leave. And then if you call me, oh, I, I, I've, I've had this happen where I've, um, you know, uh, said, you know, I'm going to pick you up at 8 o'clock and the person, you know, show up at the house at, at 8.15. Oh, I just got in. I go, oh, well, I'm gone. But I, I, was, I was getting stuff for the date. Well, I mean, I, that may be so, but we knew, you knew that this date was at 8 o'clock. So you should have been here at seven. Well, and I, well, you know, this happened. I, I, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not unreasonable because there's always a situation when things could happen. But we, I would go, well, listen, we, we could try this again tomorrow. Or we could try it next week. But if you leave, what you're saying is, I am not going to sit around and wait for you to come down. I, when I show up, you need to be ready. You need to respect my time. How many brothers do we know every time it has a date and the woman is late and they sit and wait and wait an hour, two hours, and they go, oh, I'm just, I'm always late. I'm sorry. You're going to have to get used to this. No, the fuck I don't. Let's end this relationship. Let's end this date right now. We can start back. And then if you want, we can, I've, I've done that. I've, I've ended that. We got a call. Let's go. 347-464-2827. Call you're on the air. What's going on? Who am I speaking with? Uh, my name's Brandon, man. I've been a fan since back in the day with Patrice. Dope, dope. What, what, how can I help you, Brandon? So, Not necessarily help. More of like, a, you know, you were really close confidant with Patrice. Um, and I'm just, and y'all had a very similar mindset when it comes to a lot of things. But then there's, I've heard some other stuff where you varied pretty much from what how he would have probably perceived it. But um the men go their own way movement that's been going on really. And it's been really yeah. picking up a lot more steam in recent months, years. If anybody doesn't um, know, that's, the I guess Mi- I, that's the MGTOW movie, MGTO dude, that's men go their own way. That's guys who have right. decided that they're no longer going to, uh, they're just going to not deal with women at all. Uh, and I, and I mean, in some cases they, you know, they'll go to professional women and have sex with professional women, but, but go ahead. Uh, what's your, what's your question? I guess um, I guess how we will never know what he had to say about it or anything like that. You know, God rest his soul. But I guess from your experience with him, what would you say his feelings are with? That I movie? I don't know because what he his... would say. I I don't know what I would say. But I can tell you what I would say. I mean, I don't I don't I don't respect. I mean, the thing is that when it, when him and I were doing uh, Black Phillip, I talk about this all the time. I mean, it was two thousand six. We're looking at almost 20 years later. Um, I've evolved in ways that I, I, I couldn't imagine right now. And, um, and, and uh, to be honest, uh, I, I think he would have evolved as well. I just don't know where that is. And, and you know, but I, I will say this. I, I've, I've looked at the movement in general, and I've, I, it's a, it's, it's a cop-out, dog. The MGTOW movement is a cop out. It's a cop out to for dudes who don't want to deal with the rejection it takes to actually confront women, talk to women, and actually be rejected by them because they don't understand the subtext and they don't understand how to present themselves in a way to to advocate for their their uh, their better attributes, if that makes sense. Right. And then no, the, that does. And then the um the internet has given way to a whole lot of bullshit because. You know, I mean, if you got a bunch of nerds that don't get laid and, you know, they make the best websites, bro. So you got right. amazing websites with, with with graphics and and explosions and stuff like that. And so it gives it a place for people to be on their bullshit together. 
You know, right. and then I, I've like mine. Yeah, yeah. Fuck them bitches. We ain't gonna. Blah, blah, blah. We're never gonna sleep with them. Me neither. Right. When it's and then it's like, yeah. And I've seen this happen where I got a MGTOW dude. A dude, I know a big that MGTOW dude who started consulting with me. He got a girl, and then all his boys got mad at him because he got a girlfriend. <laughs> I, I I agree with that point too. It's like the the same people that said fuck her. I'll, you know, if I take her to Cheesecake Factory, then she gonna have to deal with it. The same motherfuckers that would never have the chance to take her to Cheesecake Factory. Eggs. And then and then you get guys. I literally all his MGTOW friends. Uh, were mad at him and cut him off because he got a girl. You got to think about this. Look, if you like, if you ain't getting no pussy, you know what? A, a great cure for MGTOW and 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 Proud Boys are get some, getting laid. Somebody blowing you. That that cures all of that shit. All of that angst comes from a fear that you're trying to that you're ultimately trying to find a place to justify it so that you don't have to deal right. with the fact that you're afraid. And when I consult with guys, I'll tell them, man, you're you're afraid. Well, I'm not really afraid. It's just that I feel, well, that's fear. I I want us to understand I think what we have to do as men is we have to embrace the truth. This is why the the everything goes back to those three principles, ace, authenticity, telling the truth, credibility, saying what you mean, meaning what you say, and empathy, understanding that women have gone going people in general go through things that we haven't gone through. And when we when we approach it that way, right? Uh to 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 understand when there is a fear and to just say it's I'm afraid. You know, I, especially when I'm doing a consultation with you, because I can, f I know what it is. You're not gonna fool me. I, I've done it a thousand times. You're afraid. You're afraid not to have somebody. You're afraid to be exposed for something imposter syndrome. You're afraid not to measure up. You're afraid to get left. You're afraid to where she says you're not good enough. She, you're afraid that your dick's not big enough. You're afraid that your body's not hard enough. You're afraid that you don't make enough money. That she's gonna leave you for somebody else. Don't. I mean, these are all human fears that we all have. But when we acknowledge them, at least then we can address them and see. And and, and sometimes we can't address them. But if we don't acknowledge them, we, 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 we can't even start the conversation. Does that make sense? No, for sure, for sure. And this is more of like a, you know, I haven't, man, it's been such a while since I've heard you. So it's like, man, I just wonder how you feel about this. Because I, I just kind of saw you on Godfrey's show. I was like, oh, shit, Dante's over here. Yeah, yeah. I remember you had your brown Phillip for a little while. Yeah, and then it was beige Phillip. I, yeah, I yeah. fell off of that. Well, beige Phillip, my bad. Yeah, well, what what happens a lot of times is a lot of times we'll be, we'll, you know, like I had a guy who put in my comments, he was like, oh, Patrice, Patrice will be disgraced by, and I'm like, man, suck my dick. Like, <laughs> like as if you, if you <laughs> yeah. knew, the, if you, if, if you knew this dude, and what a lot of people don't understand was, people don't understand that Patrice, did, like, Doug, I was a male stripper for 10 years. I was a pimp for six. Like, I had, I had slept with thousands of I mean, when i say thousands thousands i'm not bragging about it i'm just saying that's what it was i mean the the, the, the business i was in allowed me to do that and so P patrice never got laid like that he didn't start getting laid until he got until he got famous and right. when he got famous and he went to brazil was when he started having an understanding of the fact that his value and his his righteousness was thing was were the thing that women really found attractive but that was much later i mean i was living this life and it, one of the things i say about the black phillips show i say this all the time and, and guys argue with me and don't get me wrong i, I understand we had gr great things that were said and things were done and patrice i love patrice i miss him every day but to be honest he was angry at women um he didn't grow up with a he didn't grow up with a with a dad his mom was was not particularly very supportive and he and and he didn't get laid a lot and so a lot of the women that he, you know, when he started getting famous and people, or and it wasn't just him famous, but the fame is what gave him the confidence to really understand what his value was. And when he understood what his value was, then women found him attractive. Um, but he was still angry about the women that didn't like him when he was when he what when he didn't have the confidence. Confidence, right? But it's it's really not their fault, dog. You you you're selling a product that you don't believe in. How do you expect somebody to want to buy it? Very true. You know, I, I say this to women all the time. And even women that are in the chat or they're listening or whatever, I'm going to tell you something. You, you get women who will be like, 
well, uh, he going to take me as I am. I'm a, I'm a boss, bitch. No. Like, look, when you sell a used car, right, you shine that motherfucker up. You put armor roll on the tires. You don't have old White Castle hamburger boxes in the back. You Even if the car is old and the, and the, and the engine is knocking, you put heavy oil in it so it don't knock. You present yourself in your best way. For you to think, for men, women, or anybody else to think that they can present themselves in the least flattering way as possible, and somebody's supposed to take you, you're out of your mind. You are out of your mind. So, is that, does that make sense to you, bro? Oh, no, absolutely, brother. I, I, you know what? It's just, like I said, a longtime fan, and I was like, man, let me just pick his brain. And see are you a MGTOW dude there. or no? No, no. My girl's in the other room coughing okay. up a storm. I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, right. I'm just watching, man. I was like, let me just see what you guys say. I appreciate you, man. Uh, thanks a lot, Absolutely, man. Thanks, brother. man. Call, call back every Tuesday. We do this every Tuesday at eight thirty. Um, with me and Big Mike be doing this. I mean, I, I was out of town a little bit in Tijuana getting the super soldier, you know, get my my stem cells up and stuff. I just went down and shout out to Scotty. And Ed Clay down at CPI Stem Cells, big shout out to them. They getting me healthy and whatnot. Um, I'm 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 excited about that. Uh, is the let me get that number, Mike? Uh, yeah. uh it's it's after ten. Oh, it's it after. Okay, I know my mom's right. here. All right, cool. Um, yeah, dope, man. I, I like I appreciate you. I also apologize for starting out late. Um, and, you know, I was I was I'm a little limpy from doing the stem cells. So thank you all for calling, man. Calling everybody who called in. Please don't forget. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on uh, on uh, the Dante Nero, uh, Dante Nero dot com. Dante on on YouTube um, and uh, all all platforms. Everything you know. Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Uh, also, if you need a consultation, Dante Nero dot com. Click on consult. You can get a one on one consultation. We can dig in a lot deeper than we can do here. Also, don't forget the Patreon. Patreon. We do a lot of extra extra content a lot of technique and stuff on patreon.com slash manschool202 uh gybb get your balls back wwdd what would dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted also i will start i'm getting ready to start a second live stream uh from my studio but i'll be announcing that next tuesday um peace man uh, gybb i uh, get your balls back wwdd what would dante do the sexual revolutions being podcasted i love y'all man thanks for tuning in man please tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend we out of here peace man school 202 better hear what i've got to say because you won't get it again i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man well, put your happiness first because if you don't they won't